We do, as everyone's favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast. And I think today uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Canon Zoom Lens FD 28 to 50 millimeter 1 to 3.5 SSC. It's on the, uh, uh, the Nikon Z50. And just for comparison purposes, let's just compare it to uh, the Pentax, SMC Pentax A zoom, uh, F4 24 to 50 millimeters. And it looks to me uh, that the Nikon, uh, the, the Canon, uh, looks bigger for some reason. It's this longer lens. So uh, I'm going to put the. Uh, the Pentax away because I'm not really want to talk about it. I'm going to mention it. But I'm going to put it away anyway Here is uh, a Nikon Zoom Nikkor 28 to 50 millimeter uh, 3.5 so let's just hook this bad boy up and It looks to me like this Canon is much bigger longer than this, but let's put that aside for a minute. Notice it has uh, this cutout, and you think that's some sort of a uh, lens shade thing. But no, it's just a design, because uh, let's look in here. Let's look in here. See, I'm at 28, and then now I'm at 50. It's recessed at 50 millimeters, so it, acts like, it does act like a lens shade. And at 28 millimeters, uh, well, let's, let's turn the focusing ring. Watch this. Oh, some lens shade, right? It turns <laughs> the lens shade pedals, which I don't think is that effective. At 50 millimeters, I don't think it matters uh, because it's just a lens shade. At 28, I mean, it's so close to the lens, I don't think there's any vig vignetting from it. And when you turn it, it doesn't matter. So that's why it looks bigger, because it has a built-in uh, lens hood. Uh, so I always say how I'm a Canon guy. And I thought maybe I should review a Canon lens. And I really didn't know this lens existed, but I found out about it. So I ordered one up. And guess what? This is, I like this better than the Nikon Nikkor zoom lens. Uh, I like it better than the, um, the Pentax 24 to 50 millimeters. This is 28 to 50 millimeters. So let's put the Pentax aside for a minute. We'll just concentrate on these two. Uh, let's see, what's this stop down to F22? What does this stop down to? F22, okay. Um, this is extremely consistent across the whole zoom range. That from 50 to 28, uh, the aberrations and sharpness uh, are very even. Like it doesn't get funky at 28. Uh, uh, there's no uh, worst case scenario through the zoom range. So uh, I know a, a lot of older Canon lenses do that throughout their zoom range. They stay very consistent with the resolution uh, as opposed to like the, uh, the Pentax, which it goes to 24 millimeters. The 24 millimeters looks very soft to me, even at all uh, f stops. But that's just me. Now, this has this M. An A button here, a, a, a M, and a little arrow. So if you turn that, it goes into macro mode. And of course, you got to be in a 28. Push the button forward, then you go into macro mode, and you can focus about six inches away, right? Now, the, this uh, Nikkor has a macro mode at the 50 millimeter position. And it looks like you could get down to like, uh, what is this, 0.9 uh, up two feet, two feet, shit. You only get to two feet normally, but then you could go down to, uh, hmm, maybe you could get down to like one foot with this thing in the macro mode. So 50 millimeters, that's a little bit more useful than this, but at least this has it because uh, the Pentax, let's look at the Pentax real quick. The Pentax only goes down to 1.25 feet or something like that anyway, so uh, I don't know what to say. Of course, that's between 50 millimeters and uh, 24 millimeters. So uh, 
uh, it's hard to say uh, uh, which is more effective. But this has a unique perspective and is really sharp in its macro mode, i got to admit that. And of course this thing uh, is uh, reasonably sharp across its whole range too, but it only goes down to 28 millimeters, which I find interesting that both of these guys only go to 28 millimeters and uh, I give this one the edge. You say, ah, a boomer, you're a cannon guy, of course you're going to say that. Well, um, these are all metal construction and I was shooting this in the dead of winter and I think there is, uh, you know, some uh, differential expansion going on making the night core look a little worse and I'm going to reshoot this now that we got some warmer weather and it's in the uh, springtime and uh, we don't have to worry about the uh, temperature variations. So uh, I went to the country, I went to the town, I did a whole photo shoot at this, and you can see the photos following. And I really like uh, the contrast, uh, the coloring of this lens. Uh, this, it has a nice look that I really like. It has the Canon look, what can I say? And they really nailed it on these guys. And um, uh, the reason I think that it wasn't that popular was because it is uh, uh, a lens hood, lens pedal arrangement. You know, the why couldn't this have been fixed? So when you focus it, it always stays like that. You know, I think this turned people off when it went like that. People are saying, what was Canon thinking? Aside from that, it's a really nice lens. Out of these three vintage lenses that are all like uh, uh, 2x zooms, approximately, this is the best. This is definitely the best, without a doubt. So uh, it's got that going for. And the Z50, I modified uh, my settings on the Z50. And I'm going to sh sh did shoot them all a little bit. And I seem to get better results now with the settings I picked. Uh, well, we could look at them, can't we? Uh, menu. Uh, image quality, fine. ISO sensitivity. White balance, set picture control, manage active D lighting. I have on high, long exposure reduction on, high IS no, low, Vignette control normal, diffraction compensating off, auto distortion control off. Uh, let's see anything else. All right, let's just go back. All right, let's go to uh, hit menu again. Um, the I button. Ah, let's see what we got in the. A1 is what? That's the white balance? Yeah. Uh, SD, uh, down, adjust everything. So quick sharp, I have uh, uh, almost uh, maxed out. Sharpening, I have, uh, I don't know, 6 or something. Mid-range sharpening is uh, 250. Clarity is 3. Contrast, I have uh, minus 0.25. Brightness is uh, nominal. And saturation is nominal. And uh, that, those are my new settings. Now the Z50 is a really nice mirrorless camera. If you want to get into mirrorless lenses, seriously, you should really get one. They're a little pricier, even used, compared to other cameras. Like uh, uh, it's cheaper to get a used Sony, especially the, the 5000 series. Uh, you could get for half the price of this. But then this has eye level viewfinder and it is a fantastic menu with all these adjustments with the, the Sony just doesn't have. Uh, and um, uh, well, all right, I, I made my decision. I'm sticking with it. I'm going with the Nikon mirrorless cameras. Uh, even though I'm a Canon guy, I don't think I'll ever get a Canon mirrorless camera because uh, there's no need to. I, I like Canon cameras and I, uh, I like the, the way they work. And they take excellent pictures, but you know I, I'm into this uh, ecosystem now, uh, and I got all my adapters, so I'm just sticking with this. Yes, yes, I have some uh, uh, Sony A5000 uh, series uh, cameras, but um, uh, I notice they fall through the wayside now. You know, since I like this so much better, the A5000 uh, series doesn't have the electro electronic viewfinder, so uh, and that's a big negative for them. Although they are cheap. And I highly recommend them. If you want to go cheap and get into um, vintage lenses, then they, you can't go wrong with the Sony A5000 series. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Now, this is excellent build quality, all metal. It's got rubber uh, uh, on the uh, focusing ring. It's on a zoom ring. It's a two-touch. Uh, as opposed to this is push-pull type, uh, the uh, Pentax is a two-touch also.
I like to touch because you know you could uh, get used to doing this. Um, what's that on A? That's better. Um, I shot this 3.5 and it does a really decent job, much better than uh, the uh, the Nikkor and the Pentax. And stop down one stop down at f4 5.6. And it's really good. And the only time you want to get, really go deeper, uh, smaller aperture is to get depth of field. So, uh, the, you'll check out the pictures, and of course you'll see some that look very similar. You can compare them to my other reviews and go back and look. Uh, but this is the best. And they're all around the same price. Uh, this one, yeah, they're all around the same price, slightly over 100 bucks. Uh, of course, you could go on eBay or Amazon or, you know, find one somewhere or get lucky in a thrift store. But um, uh, I, I just go to uh, 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 a well-known uh, used camera vendor in uh, Smyrna, Georgia, and that's where I get my stuff. And I trust their ratings. And when they say it's excellent uh, condition, they are, without a doubt. And I had no problems uh, with that. Of course, if you don't mind getting a, a more beat-up version, well, then, um, you know, then you could go cheaper. You get a bit more beat-up version. Maybe it's more banged up, or the optics are foggy, or, you know, something like that. Um, any one of these is the, the Zoom Nightcore, uh, the SMC Pentax Zoom, or even this one. You can't go wrong with any of them, really, depending. If you're a Pentax guy, a Nikon guy, uh, go ahead and get one of them. You won't be disappointed. But uh, I give this one the edge. Without a doubt, throughout its zoom range, it's uh, sharper. Uh, it's more crisp and uh, better micro contrast. And um, it, it just, uh, I thought it was better. So without uh, further doggy do, let's jump right into the samples and you can make your own decision. I got to the park just at sunrise. I was able to shoot a couple of shots at f3.5 and I was very pleased with the results. They were just a tiny little bit soft, but they were rather sharp. Whether I was shooting at uh, 28 millimeters or 50 millimeters, I was very pleased with the results. Very pleased with the results. And then I stopped down uh, half a, I stopped at f4 and then uh, I shot a couple pictures at 5.6 and the rest were all at uh, 8, 11, and 16 because I was walking up the hill. Uh, I was walking into the sunlight because I was in a little valley. And you could see from the shadows here, that, uh, you know, what was happening. And the rest were uh, uh, excellent. I was very pleased with this, you know. Uh, and of course, the Z50 has some troubles with uh, maintaining a constant uh, um, white balance. See, like, this is very orange, and this is actually what it looked like when we were standing there. But then, like, the next picture I took, it sort of subtracted that orange. And I only walked, like, uh, maybe 100 feet. So it wasn't like uh, it was uh, very uh, many minutes later. And here's a perfect example. It's more yellow, where the other one was more neutral. And I couldn't understand it. I was in the shade here. So I expect the rocks. And the rocks did have this strange sort of chameleon look to them. Uh, they are like pink rocks with white inclusions in them. Um, here's a perfect example. But it ranged from pink to uh, reddish uh, to uh, slate grayish looking. It was like that. And oh, there's a New York City skyline out in the distance. I think this came out excellent. I was very pleased with that picture. There are erratics all over. A glacier came down hundreds of thousand years ago, scraped this mountain, and when it retreated, uh, the, the boulders, this is the three kings, I call this the three kings, it just dropped them there. Unless people came up there and moved them around like chess pieces, I don't know. This is the with the macro function. This looks like the head of a, a dragon, doesn't it? That's exactly what it looks like. Here's another macro close-up of some uh, lichen on an erratic. And of course, here I am in the other park with the beaver pond, it's a bright sunny day uh, around noon or something like that. And uh, I was stopped down to F16 definitely. I was very pleased with the, uh, the results. And uh, it looks like it's a relatively low aberration lens to me compared to uh, the, the Nikkor Zoom 
or SMC Pentax uh, zoom. But uh, since uh, it was more benign temperature, uh, I'm going to have to do a, a reshoot of the other lenses to see if uh, the cold weather had anything to do with it. Differential expansion of the metal and glass uh, could have had uh, detrimental results. If you think about it, when the, these lenses are made in a factory, it's a temperature controlled environment and they have to be tested. Everything has to be constant temperature because if you, if you grind and polish a lens when it's hot and then uh, you check it in a room that's cold, uh, you're going to get different results. In fact, you would have to leave the uh, samples there for hours in order for them to, uh, uh, you know, stabilize because you're talking about millions of an inch you want to measure uh, of these lenses, the, uh, the surface curvature of these lenses. So, uh, you know, they go through all this trouble of keeping everything exactly the same temperature, and what do I do? I take the lens out under, you know, extremely cold conditions, and I think that messes lenses up. But still, I like this lens because this is like we're shooting close to the sun to get these leaves backlit like that. And it, it, it behaves itself really good, sharp, fine lens. Really excellent. Now, here's a perfect example. Here's A in the lower left-hand corner. B, look how sharp that is. Sure, it was at 11 or 16, but still, it was really sharp. Really sharp. A lot of these center crops, they're downsampled. Like, it's a bigger than this movie format, so I had to downsample it to the movie format. And, of course, this is April, and it was like just a nice day in April. Uh, and the sun was bright. It was around noon. And uh, it was a, no, no, this tree is sort of uh, slightly backlit. And I really liked the way it handled uh, the shadow detail of these uh, backlit subjects. Here's another wide open of 3.5, 50 millimeters of a tattoo store. Here's another um, neon sign of 3.5. And here I am in the city where one of my cities and you can recognize a lot of these subjects, but it's for comparison. So you can compare, uh, you know, uh, a granny uh, wine snap with uh, Golden Delicious Apples, that's what you're doing. You're comparing apples to apples, but different brands of apples. Now, if you're not perfectly parallel and perpendicular to your subject with a wide-angle lens, it's going to introduce the uh, perspective of distortion, which makes it hard to like uh, straighten things out later uh, in post-processing. So, uh, But I did notice some slight complex mustache distortion, but it's really not that noticeable. You know, and uh, uh, this lens did a really excellent job. Here's the three terrorists. Uh, here's the, some raindrops on the terrorist face. That's Lafayette, the guy with the big nose. This is George Washington, the head terrorist. This is a backlit situation because the sky was bright and it was dark enough that they still had the lamps on. And uh, it, it did a really excellent job in a, a really hard uh, backlit uh, condition. Now this uh, camera, uh, if I put it in the uh, aperture priority mode uh, or the A mode, it'll pick there's just shutter speed for me. So if I turn the f-stop on the ring, it also automatically compensates. But what's great is because this lens is a constant aperture, uh, I don't have to think about, am I in a wide-angle lens? Am I going to gain an f-stop? Am I in the telephoto lens? Am I going to lose an f-stop? You know, and uh, that's why I, I like to buy vintage zoom lenses that are constant aperture. But now all modern lenses, they all have like uh, variable aperture, but they're all hooked up to the camera, and the camera, you know, keeps track of everything. So all you have to do is dial your dial, and whatever number it says is the number you get. Notice how sharp the bricks look, but look at how blurry the uh, the, uh, the bushes were there. So I think that's a JPEG uh, processing, you know, uh, uh, like the, the green leaves here and everything. They look a little, um, so we say, uh, soft, but if you look at the hard lines of the architecture, it looks uh, sharper. So it must be somehow the uh, camera's doing something uh, when it's uh, uh, saving to the JPEG format. So there's happened to be a uh, fire truck running by, so I took its picture real quick. 
you know, had to be quick. But I really like this lens. It's sharp. It's, it behaves itself well. Uh, it's got good uh, corner detail, at least on a crop sensor anyway. The Z50 is a crop sensor camera. So we've seen how uh, this lens uh, does under bright lighting conditions of a uh, noonday sun, and then we see how it overcast mornings. And it, uh, it's, you know, some lenses like some uh, better and they do worse uh, on others, but this lens seems to uh, do okay, doesn't seem to care. And of course, it's, it's all through the zoom range, uh, different uh, distances from uh, close, medium, and far. And then you look at the colors, like pink, blue, uh, I mean purple, uh, all over, everything was, uh, it, it's a strange town. And it's an upscale town where a lot of rich people live. And then they have, uh, you know, the things that rich people would like, you know, bistros, we could, a nice day you could sit on the street. They polished and cleaned up this plaque. It looks like uh, someone burnished her nipples a little bit, huh? And I don't remember these helmets being uh, burnished too. So I don't know if that was uh, off the books cleaning or not. There's a lot of these massive churches there. And, uh, you know, April, when everything is blooming, you have um, these trees and against the bricks. And I think it looks pretty cool. And a lot of these streets used to be all residential, but now some of these old uh, big houses, they're all turning into professional buildings. And here's a perfect example of the, uh, the macro setting. And this is some sort of bookworm guy. They stuck him in front of the uh, uh, the library. Here's another macro mode, another macro. And here's this some uh, driving down the street. Saw this mural, so I took a picture.